so for my project today, it's amazing. Um, it's one I started last week. I wasn't sure if I was going to keep going with it, but it was um, to give local businesses the same advantage as bigger ones. So, for example, I took these two apps from the App Store that locate franchises for you, so you can download them, see everything about that franchise from your phone. But give it all the features you get from going on like a Yelp review or a Yellow Pages. And for example, I pushed coffee in Sydney and all that came up was Tim Hortons. So there's local coffee shops like The Perk and their website. No offense, it isn't that great. This is their menu on it. And the Do ugly they really have broken images like mm -hmm. that? Oh. It's still, I don't think they've updated it in a while. Um, and the ugly mug, they're really good for updating their Facebook, but I know my mother likes eating there. And she hates every single day having to go onto their Facebook page to see what the menu is for the day. But they do have good information on it, like their number, their hours availability, their website. Um, and that's like their everyday posts that they do. So my idea was an app. This was not the opening page. Um, I accidentally deleted last week, so I just kind of remade this today. Um, basically, it's just the two squares. So on your top one, it's a little like location pin. So you tap that and it uses your GPS, or the second one is just enter the city name you're going to. So this was an example of Sydney, and I clicked on coffee shops, and it brought up local ones. Uh, so this would be the page for Wentworth Perk. has their menu, hours of operation, about us, photos and views, directions. And this was an example of a menu I just did up. Oh, colors changed on it. Um, so this week I used Bootstrap. I realized after that I'd probably need to use Polymer instead for using maps and stuff. So I'm going to look at starting that next week if I do keep going with this. Um, and this is just everything I went through to download Bootstrap. Mm -hmm. It was really straightforward. I liked that. Not just like Redis. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> and then I went through one of the tutorial videos. And these were, um, all the highlighted ones are files I created. Everything else was installed already. And that's all I have. Cool. Oh, so you, start, you started to use Bootstrap, but you didn't? I did use Bootstrap. That was the other thing I meant to show. Oh, okay. Just an FYI as well. Um, Polymer is good, but it's not required for using a map. You can, you can, can use map. Oh, okay. I thought it was like the one you use if you needed maps. No, I implement no. maps with Opolymer all the time. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. If uh, you need help, let me know. Okay. Um, I sense an anti-Polymer sentiment. <laughs> <laughs> no, the only thing no, no. thinking about no. Polymer. <laughs> I plan on learning Polymer because they, oh, when I, I get any spare time. Because they've turned Google Maps at, into an element, into a yeah. Polymer element, all you have to do mm. For polymer is to stick in the element, yep. and it automatically populates. Oh. Whereas, it, I don't think it's incredibly complicated to stick it in. No, no. you can get an event link like from any map. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's just like Google, Google made both of them, yeah. polymer and yeah, the Google he, Maps. So they just yeah, they're and two hundred and fifty plus other eight guys. <laughs> <laughs> what's what's the old saying? There's more than one way to skin a cat. <laughs> as morbid as that is. <laughs> I did the tutorial through Bootstrap and got a little bit done. Not much. And this cool. is what it looked like, so I kind of gave up on that. That was today, though. And, yeah, that was just the same thing. But the CSS definitely wasn't working the same as it was for my wireframing. Shona today um, had put her images into, like, you use a responsive image class in Bootstrap, so she could show you that. Okay. Um, and the images will be large, and then as you size your browser down, they shrink yeah. with your content, and it's really cool. Okay. Yeah. I'm definitely going to see you about that. You'll note, however, that I didn't actually show you what happens when I expand and contract. <laughs> it would. But it's cool. It's impressive, though. There's some pretty cool, there's pretty cool things. There's a good that. tutorial on columns. Um, that's, it's, it's kind of hard to understand. I'll find the link for it. Is that the one where it just shows all the sizes and different, like, grid? Well, it's a, it? it's a guy from India that did it. It's, it's wonderfully done, but he explains the whole, um, logic, I guess, behind using columns and using the different views. So, yeah. you know, scaling from 12 down to, like, 4 on a, on a mobile or 2 or whatever. Um, so your content actually fits the device that you're going to be doing. Can she do the same thing in one though? Yeah, that's a framework. Like if you just want to do directly in Bootstrap, mm. you can 
Because I did find an art. It was all numbers, though, for columns and mm -hmm. grids. And, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Well, he explains it just very well. Just It's hard to understand. Okay, so with this idea, the problem is that the big franchises and the large companies have more presence online than the small local shops. Yeah. And the small local shop, shops do have Facebook and they do have Yelp and they do have sometimes their own websites and things like that. Um, but those aren't very good or, or sort of how do you explain that next part of it? Because I, I, I think that would be the first like objection that somebody would have to the idea is like, well, what about Yelp? Yeah. Right? Or what about Facebook or, or like these types of things? I haven't used it on the mobile Yelp specifically, but I know the website. I hated the website the second I went on it. And I think Carol had a similar feeling about it. It's yeah, just there's too much. It's really cluttered. I like that there's ratings and stuff on it so you can see what other people think, but it's just, it's all of it thrown at well, once. One of the things I hate the most about Yelp. This is the third time today, I think. Um, on the drive down last night, we were complaining about Yelp, and I complained again about it this morning. But I hate the fact that it's not map based. Yeah. They like you have to search first, and then yeah. you can like show the map. All I want is just the map, and like I just want to go through. It. And Google Maps is like really not very reliable when you're trying to search for like coffee or lunch or like something like that. It's it's really not very good. And I think if you could just go into a town like Sydney and bring up a map and it's just like here's a map with all of the yes. coffee shops and pizza places and lunch spots and just like anything that's like relevant to me at that time of day or something like that would yeah. be cool um, and you click on those and it just gives you the information that you want like the hours, hours. of operation I find nice. that's a big one yeah. <laughs> we keep yeah. talking pizza I might have to step away due to conflict of interest yeah. just saying <laughs> But you know, just just being able to just see that, like, on on a map because What's it's near you. It's yeah. it's a location based thing. Like you really want to know, and I think it's it's often time based too. So it's just like right now, what is near me, and and because I want coffee, and, and like what's it's so open. hard, right? <laughs> it really it really is hard. So I think if you can, I don't. Know, I guess the challenge here is like how do you make this like the spot that is like a reliable source of information yeah. because once you have all that information it's about keeping that information updated and if you have a menu it's about keeping that menu updated and facebook is awesome because the companies manage it themselves the problem with the companies managing it is that they don't think to put hours of operation for some reason um, but facebook could easily be if they had like the information that i was actually looking for it could be the best because they've managed to to get it to a place where the companies will maintain the information themselves. Yeah. So I think if you could like somehow create a system that is like it is map based and so it's a nice user experience, but the companies are somehow enticed to like keep it updated themselves. And if you could give those companies like feedback, like your profile is not complete because you haven't entered your hours of operation and these types of things like really give them very a very simple way to like po to populate their profile with the content that people actually want and without worrying about spending like a ton of time designing a website or anything else just no you need this 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 and this this is what people are going to be looking for kind yeah of an easy so, way I'm to not do. True, but yeah, I thought that, that was also like businesses putting in their own information um, but like because the website itself is ugly i just felt like no one did like a good job in describing their own from like their it's like pictures of their menu it's no one like actually putting in like a when nice i go on it i just want to exit because there's like yeah, everything yeah. so i'm not out. sure if that's like business um businesses are updating it themselves or if that's like the people that made yelp I, um, a lot of the users just put in the information so yeah. a lot of times the only yeah. menu on yelp is like a user took a photo of it yeah, yeah. yeah. god bless those people <laughs> <laughs> I, think, yeah. I think a business can go on yelp and see that they have a profile and then make a claim to that profile and say um, that this is wow. they verify themselves there has yeah. to be yeah. a certain Spoon level of though, right? what's Spoon that is company managed right I think they do have an ability to company manage, but I, I don't know if there's a lot of power to, 
behind company managing, right? Because like Yelp's prime, as, as far as I know, Yelp's primary usage is for people to review the restaurants, review. right? So you can you can see right away, like, am I gonna, are they gonna bring out like dirty dishes to me to eat off of or something like that? And if I'm, if I, if that's me, and I own a restaurant that's getting unsavory reviews. The first thing I'm going to want to do is go and claim my profile and like either disable reviews or get rid of all the bad reviews. I don't think you can. You can't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that's what I mean. There's there's a limited amount of power when it comes to yeah to companies actually taking control of their Yelp profile. Yeah. So, Darren, is this, your positioning is so basically going to pull in or aggregate all of the independent. Yeah, well, but we talked last category. week. Yeah, like okay. filter by coffee shops, restaurants, even like small local shops for like tourists that yeah. come here. So where's that page at? Did I didn't, oh. I deleted everything oh, I had last week. And yeah. it does, it looks like what you're doing is very similar to what, what myself and Matt are trying yeah. to do. And, and our primary thing is we're trying to bridge the gap between these big box companies that can afford to hire people, that can afford to hire consultants to, to custom make these solutions for them, and the little people who can't. So it's, it's a very, very good idea. Um, but, but for us, right, like the, the pizza shop has to initiate the getting into our, our system. So yeah. with this, it's a little different because as far as I can tell, you're trying to create your, your database of, or your, your listing of companies yourself, right? Yeah. Because I went to the park, everybody saw my pictures I took last week, because they don't have yeah. like a real menu or prices or you, anything online. In that case, you just, you'd have to be very, very mindful that your product doesn't become what you're trying to fix, right? You don't want to get like Wentworth Perk on there and say, okay, well, this is wicked. I put the perk in, I put their hours of operation, I put their full menu in there, and the perk is good to go. And then eight months down the line, the perk completely changes their menu, they completely change their hours of operation, and they move to another location. And you're still stuck with old data, right? Maybe so. that's as simple as having like the concept of like a verified mm -hmm. like location, and after so much time, you know, it's no longer verified. Like they, right. the yeah. owner has to come back and say, like, yes, yeah, that everything's up to date. And it's, it's, so you have some way of like, of, like giving a quality I'm rating sure. to the profile. Like, yeah. ha, is it complete? And it like, when is the last time that it was actually reviewed that it's yeah. completed? Or even like, yeah, like an accuracy rating or something. Like someone goes on the site, they see the restaurant, they say, oh my God, this many shit, it's not, nothing's even on it anymore that's from this. And they, they give it a very negative rating. Um, and you can kind of go back and see these, these ratings compared to what's, what's actually there. And, and you know, then you can kind of do a bit of the upkeep yourself. But the, the real key is you're going to be dealing with an awful lot of spots in the end, and you're going to want to have, you're going to want to have as much of this automated as possible because it's not a fun job going in and changing all of this stuff on the regular. So I, I think you can focus on one thing right now, and I don't know how you want to define it, but but think about the end user experience. So um, Gavin wants a coffee, right, and you are like the most reliable app that I can go to yeah. to find that coffee because I know that when I go there, it's gonna show me where I'm at on the map and it's gonna show me where coffee is on the map. And like just really, really simple like that. And there's tons of features that you can add and you can add like user comments and you can add all like all this other stuff. But I, I think really just make it like super super simple and and then there's like I don't know there's not that many coffee shops in Sydney but let's say it only works for Sydney right now right um, but that's fine just put them in manually and just focus on I know that's a kid that, not what you were just saying but like just for right now for like the minimum viable product it's just make it a challenge of like of this product to make an experience it's better than Facebook and Yelp and Google Maps and all these things so like Regardless of how the content got there, like prove that you can make a better experience. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah. Learn yeah. about learn about your audience as well, because you might want to put everything in there, but what if people are only clicking on coffee what are they using? at the same time? And then you know that people are only clicking on coffee, so you 
you angle it, you focus it on coffee, and then the coffee snobs aren't aren't deleting Permjot's not deleting it because he's finding everything that's not coffee in there, right? <laughs> so yeah. And that, I think that's a good place to start. Like, and it just keeps things really simple. Yeah. yeah. And I actually had a question for you because I know you love Starbucks. Do you have a Starbucks app on your yeah. phone? Do you use it? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Make I sure you know where that music. one location's at in Sydney. <laughs> 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 Although you can't pay with your Starbucks app at that store. The most so fix that. Great <laughs> job. Yeah, good job, Eric. <laughs>